Good afternoon, Pokesports. I'm your host, Mike, and I play with two Pokemon on the field. Today, my friends, I'm playing with Bax and Du Bois, which is a team created by WinterNight87 on Twitter. I'll make sure to link their uh, Twitter page down in the description below. Uh, they competed in the Poke Village VGC Brawl. Uh, and ended up top eight with this team. It's a 41 player tournament uh, and went four and two in Swiss, according to VGC Pastes, which also go and check them out uh, because they post these awesome. They 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 give more awareness to these awesome teams. And, and that's kind of what I'm here to do as well. Just give awareness to backs and to boys, which is using a Backscalibur, Salazzle, a Mimikyu, uh, a Zumaril, Volcarona, and in uh, an Umbreon. And when I look at this team, I think, wow, these are all Pokemon that uh, do not have a very high usage at all. If you look at the usage stats from Picoletics with any of these Pokemon, uh, the soonest that any of these Pokemon appear is Azumarill in number 20. So I looked at this and I thought, you know what? How do we pull out wins with this team? And I'm about to show you in these upcoming battles that we had against our viewers on stream uh, on twitch.tv slash Pokesports. So come along with me. I'll go and show you how those battles won and uh, we'll go and talk about them. Let's go. These matches will be post commentated because I did have these uh, battles against people live on stream and I was answering people as I was playing. So I figure, you know what, let's get straight into the battles. Let's talk about them. I'm looking at Salazzle here and I'm like, OK, Salazzle has fake out. It's it's a relatively fast Pokemon and I can fake. I can flinch five out of the six Pokemon there. I can't flinch the, the Cerule Edge because that is ghost type. Uh, they're also bringing the Cerule Edge, the uh, Sylveon, Quaquavel, um, Garchomp, Orthworm, which I always have trouble saying because I my brain does not want me to say Orthworm and uh, Kilowattrel. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, what? Pokemon could I possibly bring besides Salazzle? I'm looking at the Baxcalibur and I'm thinking, you know what? Baxcalibur has the ability to uh, set up on that first turn as long as Salazzle gets um, gets the fake out off. Uh, the chances of the other Pokemon KOing the, the Baxcalibur on that first turn are relatively low, especially looking at the looking at the rest of this team. Um, but I could also lead with a Mimikyu or the Azumarill. Uh, Azumarill with the Assault Vest means that all of its attacks, uh, it has great coverage against every single one of these Pokemon here, but I'm starting to run out of time and I'm thinking, oh no, I need to pick something. Uh, what am I possibly going to pick? Should I just pick the Backscalibur, Mimikyu, Azumarill? Actually, you know what happened? I just remembered what happened. This is the game where my Joy-Cons died. <laughs> So my Joy-Cons died and I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm glad, I guess, that I picked the Salazzle. I'm glad that the Pokemon are ordered the way that they are, uh, because that was actually the order that I was thinking of going. If we go with Baxcalibur and Salazzle, uh, Mimikyu and Azumarill in the back, then we're able to, you know, have a good setup at the very beginning of the game and, you know, have a good game for the rest of the game. So anyway, at this point, I fixed my Joy-Cons and I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm ready to battle. Uh, so looking at the, the teams that I'm going up against here, it's Garchomp and Orthworm, which shouts to me that Orthworm is going to do some Earth Eater shenanigans. So uh, it's most important for me right now that I flinch this Garchomp. So I hit the I go for the fake out on the Garchomp. Sally's going to hit it. Uh, it's going to get it's trigger the rough skin. Sally's going to get hurt uh, in the in, in return. But Baxter is because of this going to be able to get um, a sword stance off, uh, making the attack go up by two stages. The Orthworm decides to go for a Shed Tail here, which was a very interesting first turn. Was not at all what I was expecting. Uh, cuts its HP in half, sets up a substitute, goes back. And who's the Pokemon that's going to come out? I have no idea. It's Quintin. It's the Quaquavel. Uh, this Quaquavel has Moxie, so it's going to be able to do some uh, fun little setup shenanigans right now uh, because it does have that uh, that that substitute behind it. The Garchomp is still enough of a threat for me to target that instead of the Quaquavel this turn. Uh, just because Garchomp is Garchomp, I don't want it to hit my Backscalibur with a dragon move, and I kind of don't want to waste my Terrastalization on this turn. So instead, I decide to go for a Sludge Bomb on the Quaquavel so I can try and break the substitute. Um, just to see if I can, you know, maybe open that up for the next fight. I just noticed right now that the substitute uh, floats in the air. That's kind of cool. 
Um, so I am actually going to terastalize. I'm going to terastalize into water on the back scalper here. Um, and it, that is mainly so that I don't take a dragon move on the on the um, Garchomp uh, or a fighting move, actually, from the Quaquavel, more importantly. Uh, the Garchomp does go down to my Ice Shard because that's four times uh, as ineffective. But if I had not gone for a Terra this turn, the Garchomp had full range to uh, Terrastalize itself this turn and go for a dragon move on my back Excalibur and try and take it out. So that is, uh, that's the thought process there. Quinton is going to go for the Aqua Step on the, on Sally right there. And that is actually going to take out Sally. It's going to raise the speed by one stage. And because of, uh, Quark Wavel's Moxie, uh, it is going to up its attack as well. So this is pretty much like, uh, like a Quark Wavel went for a Dragon Dance in its first, uh, in its first turn out. And here I am thinking, oh no, this Quark Wavel's had the chance to kind of set up all over here. Uh, but, but. It is a water fighting type going up against my water type. I don't really see it having too much, uh, too much rain over my back scalper. So I still somehow don't really see it as too much of a threat, but I'm going to try and take it out this turn. Um, Azumarill can either go for liquidation or it can go for play rough here. I'm deciding, I believe, to go for uh, liquidation on the Orthworm. Is that right, Michael? Yeah, I guess so. So I'm trying to take out the Earthworm here. We're going to see what they're going to do. The Earthworm could go for, it can't actually go for another Shed Tail because there's just not that many Pokemon left in the world. And also it's down to 50% HP. It's not going to be able to actually execute the Shed Tail until it heals up a little bit more. So here the Quaquable actually goes for a Terastalization, which is really, really interesting. I, I did not expect it to go for a flying Terastalization uh, among all of the things that it could have done. But what it did is it, it did that so that it hit the Brave Bird. Uh, so this is a plus one Brave Bird is absolutely easily going to take out my Azumarill and trigger the Moxie one more time. So if this Quaquable does not go down at this exact moment, uh, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Thankfully, my Backscalibur turns its uh, turns on its head and Kids right toward that Quaquable with a Glade Brush. Going to take that out easy peasy uh, from half health. Now, the only thing that I'm I'm kind of worried about at this point is that uh, I don't know what kind of attacking moves that this Orthworm might want to go for, and I just used a Glade Rush. And the thing that Glade Rush does is it makes it so your opponents uh, will always hit their next move and they'll do double damage, right? And so when an Orthworm comes out right beside a Cerule Edge, you kind of got to say, OK, let's let's take a step back. We haven't won the game yet. We need to be we need to be a little cautious over something like this. Uh, I'm going to go for the Glaive Rush on the Cerule Edge and I'm going to go for a Shadow Claw or a Shadow Sneak. What's one am I going to go for? I can go for a Shadow Claw in order to outspeed the Cerule Edge um, or I can go for a Shadow Sneak to ensure some damage. I'm going to go for the Shadow Claw on the Cerule Edge. Assuming that the Cerule Edge is going to uh, terastalize, I do actually select the Earthworm instead. Bad choice because the Earthworm gets the second Protect uh, in a row. And the Cerule Edge goes for the Shadow Snake, which is going to do quite a bit of damage, especially when that's double damage. But Grave Rush is going to be rather powerful and just take out the Cerule Edge in one shot. Uh, so far, things are looking pretty good. In fact, I'm pretty sure that at this point, I'm, I sat back, I took a nice deep breath, and I thought, okay. We're we're OK for this game. That's going to be game one against uh, against Amare here. Uh, the Glaive Rush goes on whatever slot it wants to. The Shadow Claw goes on whatever slot it wants to. And that will be all for the Earthworm. Both of these Pokemon do outspeed it. Uh, Baxter's going to go for the Glaive Rush, flip around, skid on its head, not actually take it out. So good, uh, good information to know here. But that Shadow Claw is going to be more than enough to take out the Earthworm. So that's game one, and I'll, I'll give you a little spoiler a spoiler alert that uh, Amare is going to be back later in this video. But uh, that was a, that was a really good game with an interesting team that I have honestly never seen before. But what we'll do here is we'll go into game two and we'll see if we can pull out another win with Bax and Du Bois. Come on. OK, next up, we have this battle against Dylan, who's going to be bringing the Indeedee Goldengo, uh, Garchomp, Talonflame, Hydreigon and Tyranitar. Now, this is a team a little bit more my speed of, of 
teams that I've seen quite a bit already. So I, I am fairly confident that there's either going to be some kind of Indeedee lead or some kind of Talonflame lead, depending on what they want to accomplish in this game. Do they want to, to deny um, priority or do they want to create priority with the Talonflame and go for a Brave Bird or ta a Tailwind right off the bat? Something like that. Either way, I, I need some Pokemon that can either deny the Talonflame or um, that are speedy enough to actually do some damage before these Pokemon do some damage. I'm also very wary of this Goldengo, so I bring the uh, Backscalibur, the Mimikyu, the Azumarill, and then looking again at the at the Goldengo, I'm like, okay, is this is this Umbreon? Is this Volcarona? What's what's the actual play here? Do I I do I have anything for the for the Goldengo at this point? I have Mimikyu uh, that can go for Shadow Sneaks. I have Mimikyu that can go for Shadow Claws. Uh, but ultimately, I do think that bringing the Volcarona, yeah, no, I'm going back and forth between it, but I do end up bringing the Volcarona just so that I can, you know, have some fire damage to do against that. If the Tyranitar comes out here, uh, I feel like I'm a little nervous uh, uh, to actually take that out, but I do have the Azumarill sitting in the back to, to do something against that. So we'll see how this game goes. Regardless, we're going to get this game started against Dylan, who's going to send out the Goldengo and the Tyranitar, which was my fear. Uh, and we're going to start with the Mimikyu and the uh, Backscalibur. Tyranitar Sandstream is going to kick on up. And at this point, I'm thinking, OK, uh, what have I seen happen more often than not in situations exactly like this? I have seen Tyranitars go for Earthquakes or Rock Slides. So are there moves that I have that can that can go uh, and, and make it so that the, the Tyranitar doesn't do that kind of nasty damage to me? Well, yes, I could Terrastalize the Backscalibur. I could uh, Glaive Rush the Tyranitar. But right now I'm looking at this Goldengo and I'm like, that is my target here. I don't want to I don't want that thing to be around anymore. Uh, there, there are a lot of options here that involve terrestrialization on my opponent's side, and we're going to see which one they're actually going to go for right now. It is going to be the Tyranitar. Tyranitar going for the Ghost Terrastalization, which is something that I did not expect at all. I could have seen Flying Terrastalization from, from Tyranitar. I could have seen Bug. Hey, uh, I could have seen Flying Terrastalization on the Goldengo so that it could evade an Earthquake. But no, we did see a Ghost Terrastalization, and I go for the Shadow Snake because I'm like, I just need some kind of damage off on this thing because I have no, uh, no idea what it's going to do. Uh, it does end up going for a nasty plot, though. So uh, here I'm realizing, wait a second, I forgot my speed tiers. Uh, Mimikyu is faster than Goldingo, but at this point, the Mimikyu is going to take some damage from this uh, Terra, Terra Ghost Blast, Terra Blast Ghost, breaking the disguise, busting the disguise. Baxter's going to get buffeted here. Uh, and Mi uh, Mi 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 Mimichu. Mimichu is also going to get buffeted as well. However, because Tyranitar did Terrastalize here, it is also going to get buffeted. Um, I was worried in that first turn that Goldengo was going to use Make It Rain, so that uh, that was why I protected the Baxter in the first turn there. Uh, but now, now that I'm forced to not use Protect, I'm thinking, okay, I need to do some damage to this Goldengo again before it, before it takes me out. I get, like, really overly nervous, I want to say, about... Uh, taking out the school dingo. So I get, uh, so I go for the water terrestrialization so that I don't take the, the super effective damage from being ice against steel. Um, and at this point, I think, wait, and also faster than Goldengo. Let's just go for a Shadow Claw on it right here. Why not? So choosing to attack the Goldengo, go for it. Don't even think about it. Just do it. There you go. Uh, the only thing that might be able to save them at this point is, is terras not terrestrializing, is protecting the gold angle using protect on it however however with a nasty plot set up the turn before i'm not really thinking that it's that it's going to hit protect here uh so i'm going to use the ice shard on it did i really have to no because the uh shadow sneak only did close to half uh shadow claw would have been a much stronger move taking it out whatever we played a little suboptimally here but I think it's all going to, to work out at this point. That's that's what I'm thinking in my heart. Uh, Terra Blast is going to go off on the Mimikyu, and at this point, the disguise is busted, so uh, that Terra Blast is going to be more than enough to take out the Mimikyu here. 
So at this point, we both have both of our terrestrialized kaiju on either side of the uh, either side of the field. And I'm thinking, okay, what should I bring out here? Tyranitar is is terrestrialized ghost. Uh, Volcarona doesn't. It's just kind of a sitting duck against rock type moves. But it's I think it's kind of all I can do at this point. I'm not going to bring out the Azumarill. I kind of want to keep that in the back uh, because I have a lot to uh, potentially do with it. Um, so here, uh, Baxcalibur is going to uh, choose to either Glaive Rush the Tyranitar or the Talonflame, looking to Glaive Rush the Talon, uh, the, the Tyranitar actually. While the Talonflame goes and uses Fly, it's going to fly way up high. I flip around, hit the Tyranitar with my Glaive Rush, does quite a bit of damage, and my Fiery Dance that I originally t uh, uh, targeted to the Talonflame, expecting it was going to go with something like a Tailwind. Uh, is not going to hit, it's not going to connect because of the fly. Uh, now that did quite a bit of damage, that Terra Ghost, uh, Terra Blast, onto my Baxter. Uh, however, my Figgy Berry, uh, once I'm at below a third, I want to say, uh, HP, it it restored quite a bit. I think that's like 33% or something like that. I'm not exactly sure on the numbers, but uh, Tyranitar is going to get buffeted along with Volcarona and Baxter here. So. Uh, Talonflame has already chosen its target, right? It, it's more than likely using Fly on the thing that it's super effective against. That's what's going through my head here. Uh, Volcarona could go for a Fiery Dance on the Talonflame just to do some damage, but it also already got damaged by, by Sand, so it's not going to have priority uh, Flying-type moves the next turn. So I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe I'll just target the Tyranitar, and if the... If the Tyranitar is already down at this point, then it'll target the, the Talonflame instead. Talonflame's gonna use Fly, Volcarona's going to evade it, which is something that I didn't think would happen, especially because I used Glaive Rush the turn before. Um, but it looks like it, it chose the accuracy of the turn that it used it. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Anyway, is gonna use Fiery Dance on the Talonflame now, increasing my own special attack. Uh, Talonflame's going to get buffeted. Oh, it's not actually going to increase my special attack. Looks like I only had a chance to do that. That's unfortunate. Uh, Volcarona is going to get buffeted as well. Everybody's getting buffeted today. The only thing that we have left standing between us and victory is a three-headed dragon. Hydragon. What is the Hydragon going to do? We know that the Hydragon is faster than the Baxcalibur and faster than the Volcarona. Uh, so it can kind of choose what it wants to KO here. A single Draco Meteor can take out my Baxcalibur. So I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe I'll go for the Protect this turn. Keep it alive at least one other turn. Maybe hit a Struggle Bug. Lower the Hydragon's uh, special attack a little bit more. Trying to, you know, pad that damage. Nerf it a little bit. Pop the, uh, put the, put the nerf uh, uh, toys all around the Volcarona so that when it gets tossed around, it doesn't actually hurt as much. Um, my Baxcalibur is going to protect, and the Talonflame is just going to fly again. So this was a, a whole turn of not being able to do anything. If I went for the uh, Ice Shard, that would have done damage to the Talonflame, I suppose, but that was a, a very niche guess that the High Dragon would go for uh, uh, protect and Talonflame would go for a fly again. So here I'm like, okay, well, this is Baxcalibur's last turn, so I have to go for something here. Uh, I'm going to go for the uh, Struggle Bug on the Hydragon and Talonflame and the Ice Shard on the Hydragon, uh, which does a lot more damage than I thought. Fly did a lot less damage than I thought, and Hyper Voice was actually the move that Hydragon opted to use here. And here I thought, okay, well, I don't really understand why they want to do that. This is why, because of the Throat Spray. It, which kind of makes a lot of sense, right? Now you have a plus one uh, high dragon. However, it's not going to make sense anymore because now Struggle Bug is going to lower the special attack of the Talonflame. It's going to lower the special attack of the high dragon. So all of that work is unfortunately for nothing. Now I'm sending out a Zoom roll, which is basically the anti high dragon. Um, and at this point, I can go for the Aqua Jet on the Talonflame. I know that the Talonflame does not have any kind of priority. I can go for any attack that I that I really want on the on these Pokemon. Um, I'm looking at the summary on uh, Azumarill probably to show something to the stream. Uh, and then <laughs> we're going to go for a Fiery Dance. I would go for a Struggle Bug at this point now that I'm thinking coherently. But 
we'll see what I do. Am I really going to do that? Am I going to go for the, the fiery dance? Am I really thinking about this? Now let's do it. The battle was canceled. So that's how that goes. Come on, Pass Michael. You, you know how to you know how to play this game a little better than that. Um, so that's our game against Dylan. That was a fun game as well. Uh, these viewer games are always very unique and, and new to me. So anyway, let's go and take it into game three. Let's see if we can find another person. And here they are. It's Amari once again coming in with a, the exact same team. And so here I'm thinking, OK, I know what I went this team. Uh, that was when my Joy-Cons died and I just went top four. Um, but I, I thought, OK, let's let's see if they can if they can actually break the lead this time. Let's see if they can uh, uh, figure out a best of three kind of situation. This was an opportunity to teach, right, because this uh, this team that I'm facing here is not a high meta team. This is a team of somebody who is trying to make something work. And that's really, really cool. And I really, really support that. So I want to make sure that I, I give them the opportunity to try and to try and do that. So I go with my uh, Salazzle, Backscalibur, Mimikyu, Azumarill. Exact same four Pokemon as, as the last one. This is basically a simulated best of three. Um, so we're just going to go in with the exact same team. We're going to see what we can do. Um, I mean, really, the the strategy wasn't bad, right? Like it, uh, the the shed tail on the uh, Orthworm, which it won't let my brain say, uh, makes a lot of sense. It allows a Pokemon to set up within a substitute, um, as long as it's not the one that's targeted. So I have my Sally and my Baxter. At this point, I'm looking at both of them, and I'm like, okay, this is this is an easy fake out on either one of these. I need to choose which. Pokemon I want to fake out here. Which one do I want to flinch? Which one do I want not to actually do anything this turn? So we're going to go for a fake out on which one? I think the Quintin is going to be this one, the Quaquable. Uh, and because of this, I'm actually allowed to, to sword stance. However, they thought it. They knew it was coming. And I like that. I like that. They, they put up a play that seems obvious and then they detect because of the detect. My, my fake out isn't going to go off. They're going to save a little bit of damage. And if that has a uh, focus sash, then it's still up. Meanwhile, the Orthworm is going to stay in. It's going to uh, iron defense this time instead of shed tail. And at this point, I'm like, OK, you know what? This Orthworm, as much as it's iron defense, it does not want to take an overheat. And I, def I definitely did not reveal that I had an overheat in game one. Now, mind you, this these games are strange, so it's it's high, highly likely that they've also seen that my uh, my Salazzle has an overheat. But hey, maybe not. Uh, so I'm going to go for the Glaive Rush on the Quokwebo as well. And if I outspeed that, which I'm honestly not sure if I do or not, um, I might be able to take it out. So I'm going to Terrasilize into water just so I take less damage again from that Quaquavo. That's the exact same kind of thing that I did in the first game as well. Uh, just because you want the Backscalibur to live, right? And I'm going to show you some some fun little side tech with this uh, with this Salazzle as well. You use Fake Out on the first turn. Uh, you use Overheat, which lowers your special attack. But you have an Eject Pack, and what Eject Pack does is when you uh, lower your stats, you're out of there. So now I can bring in the Salazzle later uh, and fake out again. So these are, this is some some little tech that I didn't really show in the first game, but is now something that I can really take advantage of in the second game. And when you're doing best of threes, that's really important. So that Quahuevil did not actually have a, a Focus Sash. Uh, so it does go down to this Glaive Rush, this plus two Glaive Rush. It's It's a super, super powerful move. And now it's all down to Garchomp, the once well-trained, and uh, Pronotary. Pron, 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 Prothonotary. Prothonotary. Prothonotary? I don't know. Anyway, it's Kilowattro. Um, and at this point, my again, my uh, Backscalibur is plus two, uh, meaning that a Ice Shard should be able to take out Garchomp. An Ice Spinner should be enough for the uh, Kilowattro. However, I'm, I'm looking at my other moves and I'm like, ah, oh, which one's actually doing doing more here? Let's do the math. I, I always have such trouble doing doing this math. Uh, super effective versus stab. Uh, so anyway, I decided to go for, I believe it's Ice Spinner on the... Um, Ice Spinner on one and Ice Shard on the other. Kilowattro is going to 
terastalize into electric here and this is probably my most uh my, my favorite part of of this of this battle is i'm going to go for the ice shard on the kilowatt it's not going to take it out but it is going to go for a thunderbolt and because it is terra uh electric that thunderbolt is going to take out my back scalibur However, my back Scalibur already attacked, so it's not really like I need the back Scalibur at this point. So I'm I'm happy for it to go down. The Garchomp, however, is going to go for an Earthquake because it's its strongest move that it can go for. But because the Kilowattro terastalized into Electric, it lost its Flying type and it went down to its own partner's uh, own partner's Earthquake. So this was kind of a weird catch twenty two where if you I I firmly believe that if the Kilowattro had not had Terrastalized, it wouldn't have taken out my back Scalibur, but if it had not have Terrastalized, it also wouldn't have gone down to the to the Earthquake. But that was how game two went. And you know what? Because this was a very special uh, day for me, I was, I was streaming to uh, some very awesome people, I'm going to include a game four. So let's go into game four, and I'll show you one more battle that we had, just because it was a really good one. Come on. This game was against Aurora, who, if you look at the team, again, not all Pokemon that are super high meta right now. There's a Gardevoir in there. There's a Rotom Wash. Uh, there's a Dragapult as well. But there is the Talonflame, the Goldengo, the, the Garchomp, all Pokemon that you might have seen uh, a lot before. Now, again, I'm looking at Salazzle and I'm like, there are too many Pokemon that uh, don't want to take a or that can't take a fake out here. Um, there's the Dragapult that the fake out won't affect, but the rest of them I can actually do just fine, except them for the Goldengo as well. Um, so I'm looking at a Salazzle and Mimikyu and I'm like, OK, that's a, that's a pretty good lead here. Uh, Mimikyu has the Trick Room. If the Talonflame comes out, I can maybe set up Trick Room to uh, to, to kind of flip the speed tiers on its head here. Uh, and then Baxcalibur has been doing really well here. Uh, the rest of the the rest of the fam here uh, can probably can probably hold their own uh, as long as as long as I do a pretty good setup with my lead here with Salazzle and with uh, Mimikyu. Uh, so I mean, really, it's it's going to come down to what the lead is here. So let's let's see what the lead is on on this team. Pokesports versus Aurora. What is the lead going to be? Honestly, I I say that in post commentary with games that I played, I honestly don't remember. It's uh, Talonflame and Dragapult. There it is. So Sally and and Mimikyu here. Um, again, this was the this was a lead that I was kind of thinking about. And because I led with specifically uh, Salazzle and Mimikyu, now I'm kind of in a in a weird dilemma where I can let the Talonflame uh, Tailwind and I can Trick Room, but I is that actually going to be uh, the right call? I actually opt to go for both still. I, I say, you know what, let's let's fake out the, the Talonflame. Let's Trick Room because there are a lot of fast Pokemon on the other side. And let's, let's see if we can set ourselves up for victory. However, the Talonflame decides to go for a Terra Ghost. A Terra Ghost here to evade specifically fake outs. Now, the thing that the Tower of Flame doesn't know is that I messed up. Is that I messed up and I didn't actually go for a fake out. <laughs> I think I misclicked a sludge bomb and I hit the Talon Flame. Uh, so I did a little bit of damage. And the Mimikyu is going to Trick Room here, so now I know that I'll be able to get another hit off from the Mimikyu. Um, not so much the Salazzle because Salazzle's super fast. Um, but at this point, I'm thinking like, OK, let's let's save Salazzle for another day. Uh, it didn't get the fake out off. I can swap it out for something else and bring it out later and get a fake out off. Or I can bring up the Salazzle when I know that uh, another Pokemon's about to take a hit from, say, a Dragapult that I really don't want it to take. Um, so that was my thought at the moment. And then I didn't end up doing that. I, I took back my thought uh, and I just went for an attack anyway. I went for the overheat so I could get the eject pack off. The Talonflame is going to protect here, so Shadow Ball isn't going to take it out. Um, or Shadow Ball, Shadow Claw isn't going to take it out. Sally's going to overheat, but because we're now in Trick Room, the Dragapult's going to go first. Uh, or the Dragapult's going to go last, I should say. Um, and Mimikyu's Disguise is going to break. So, unfortunately, this was just a bit of an L turn for me, and I just needed to, to 
you know, run it back, think back. Do I go for an encore on the protect? Uh, but no, we got to think about, you know, our speed tiers. Uh, Talonflame is likely going to outspeed uh, the Salazzle, I believe, in Trick Room. That's what I thought back then. That's what I still think now. Mimikyu is going to go for the Shadow Claw instead, just to take out the Talonflame. We know for a fact that Mimikyu is the uh, slowest thing on the field because the, the opponent is full of a bunch of speedy boys. Um, and of course, we get the crit when the crit doesn't matter. But hey, that's that's how that works. Sally's going to overheat here, hit the Dragapult, do some damage, which isn't a bad thing. I guess, but at least we knew that uh, because we have that eject pack, we can get Sally out of there and accomplish the same thing that we were talking about before, where you could swap out the Sally for something else. Um, bringing in the back Scalibur now to deal with whatever is going to, to appear on the other side. Now, that Dragapult still has to make their turn, though, and that's going to be another Phantom Force. And Phantom Force is a tough move uh, because you can't actually protect against it. Uh, Phantom Force, they disappear on the first turn and then on the second turn they attack and they just do damage, right? If if you protect, it goes through it and it still hits. Um, meanwhile, though, we, we do have the Rotom, which kind of sits in a strange speed tier where I'm not sure as well if it's going to uh, outspeed or not. Um, so I decide to attack it. This is a turn where I can't Terrastalize into water. Uh, because, of course, I don't want to take a Thunderbolt from the Rotom. So instead, I'm going to take the Mimikyu back and send out the Salazzle. And this is the turn that I was talking about, where you can bring Salazzle back in to, to take an extra hit. Uh, Baxter's not going to take that much damage because I didn't Terrastalize Water, which I had been doing a lot for that night, so I bet the uh, expectation was that I would do that. Uh, but the Glaive Rush hits uh, the Rotom for quite a bit, uh, bringing it down to below half where the Citrus Berry is going to do uh, the rest of, the, uh, well, quite a bit of its HP back, bring back uh, a lot of its HP. The Phantom Force is going to take out my Baxcalibur, unfortunately. Uh, and the Azumarill can now come out to, you know, kind of clean up the Dragapult or clean up the Rotom, whatever I decide to do. Um, Salazzle can also now go for a Fake Out on the Rotom just so that that doesn't actually have a turn. Um, but the most important thing at this point is that Dragapult goes down before Trick Room ends. However, that's not going to be the case. Aurora is going to withdraw the Dragapult and send out Garchomp instead. However, 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 the Garchomp does not want to take a play rough from an Azumarill. It's going to get one shot by that, thankfully. And look at it. It's its mouth is just hanging wide open. It can't believe it. The Garchomp cannot believe that it just... <laughs> just sent out to die like that. Uh, the Rotom flinches, the Twisted Dimensions go back to normal, and now it's back to Dragapult being the fastest thing on the field, being the first person to move always. Uh, so at this point, I'm like, okay, no, I need to I need to really think about this pretty hard. What is my Rotom going to do? I can target the Dragapult, but it's likely just going to disappear. Uh, so am I going to target the Rotom with the play rough? Am I going to target the Dragapult with the play rough? Which one am I going to do? Am I going to Terrastalize? That's totally an option as well. If I Terrastalize right now, then my Rotom, then that Rotom on the other side of the field won't be able to take me out with a, with a Thunderbolt. So I decided to Rastalize, and then with Salazzle, because I know that's that's quite fast, and if Dragapult decides to go for a, uh, a Phantom Force, it'll just disappear on that first turn, and I'll be able to do something uh, with Salazzle. I decided to go for a Sludge Bomb on the on the Rotom, just to get a little bit of extra damage off. I, I really assume that the Dragapult is going to go for, um, for a Phantom Force here. Uh, and not something like a Dragon Darts, because if it went for a Dragon Darts, uh, that would be hitting my Azumarill, which at the time was Fairy. So it does decide to go for a uh, Phantom Force. It disappears instantly. Sludge Bomb is going to hit the Rotom. It's going to do quite a bit of damage. Not enough, but that Thunderbolt is going to be just enough to take out the Salazzle, not actually the Azumarill. Um, but at this point, Azumarill will be able to hit the play rough on the Rotom, take it out, and now it's just the Dragapult against my Azumarill and the Mimikyu. Uh, both Pokemon that it does not want to be seeing right now. There's a ghost type and a fairy type and a fairy type and a water type and a grass type all together on my side of the field. And two of those types uh, don't want to be uh, taken by the Dragapult. So I'm just going to play rough on the Dragapult with both the Azumarill and the uh, Mimikyu. 
the dragon, the, the not dragon, the phantom force doesn't actually take out the Azumarill. So I still had that in the back in case this uh, Mimikyu's play rough didn't go through, but it did. And thankfully, that is how the game was won against Aurora. I thought that was a really, really cool game, and I just wanted to show that as well. Um, but yeah, those were those were our four games for today. I hope you enjoyed them. I, I really enjoyed playing against these people who are using this team. So I just wanted to show you those games today. We're going to go and take a look at the rental team in a second. But I did want to give a big, big thanks to all of the people who stopped by the stream today uh, to go and play these games. They were a lot of fun. Anyway, let's we'll talk about that more in a second. Let's go uh, take a look at the rental code. And here it is. It's Backs into Boys by Winter Knight 87 on Twitter. Uh, the Baxcalibur, Salazzle, Mimikyu, Azumarill, Volcarona, and Umbreon. They're all really, really interesting Pokemon. And again, not Pokemon that you'd see so often on the on the ladder, especially not the Salazzle with an eject pack. It's a really interesting, very specific Pokemon that does very specific things. You can use a fake out on the first turn. Sludge Bomb uh, does quite a bit of damage against grass Pokemon. You don't really uh, expect to see a poison Pokemon in uh, the year of Luigi 2023. Um, it does really good damage against Sylveons as well, even though Sylveons are pretty highly, especially defensive. Um, and then you, uh, you have Overheat and Encore. You don't expect things to have Encore that have Encore. Right, so a Pokemon uses a fake out on the first turn, you just encore it, you're super, super fast, so it's going to be encored into fake out. Uh, or it goes for protect, or it goes for, I don't know, reflect, light screen. There, there The options are endless uh, for going for encore on a Pokemon. Overheat as well is a really good uh, thing for Salazzle, and that's why it has that eject pack. Once it lowers its special attack, it says, nope, I'm out of there, it goes back. Then you can bring out a Mimikyu that has the disguise. It can take a hit if your Salazzle went first and you're worried about uh, another Pokemon attacking in. Uh, Mimikyu is really great because it has Trick Room. It has the ability to flip the speeds on its head and then do some really good damage with Play, play Rough, Shadow Sneak, and Shadow Claw. Uh, Baxcalibur is wonderful. You can you can really take advantage of that Salazzle first turn fake out by hitting the sword stance and getting the plus two. Then Glaive Rush, Ice Shard, and Protect are all, you know, Baxcalibur staples, right? Uh, Volcarona is a great redirection Pokemon. Uh, you have Rage Powder on that. You can also use Fiery Dance to potentially increase your own special attack or Struggle Bug to reduce the special attack on the other side. It's just, a, it's a Snarl and Snarl is, is very, very good. Uh, you also have Will Wisp to reduce the physical attack if you need so. And then Umbreon. Uh, Umbreon is a Pokemon that I used this game, but is uh, certainly it certainly has its uses. Foul Play, Helping Hand and Taunt, uh, all great utility. Well, utility and Helping Hand and Taunt. Foul Play is just, you know, you need, sometimes just need an attack. But Skill Swap is a very interesting, uh, uh, interesting a thing to use on, on an unsuspecting Pokemon. You can actually skill swap a Don Dozo uh, to take its unaware away and make it aware. And when it's aware, uh, that's that's pretty good when you have uh, Baxcalibur swords dancing all over, right? Uh, or you can, I'm looking at other things that you can skill swap on your own team. I guess you can skill swap the Oblivious to inner focus if you really wanted to. But I don't know, skill swap is, a, is an interesting, uh, interesting move that you don't see too often. And when you don't see things too often, sometimes you can really catch your opponents off guard with that. Anyway, once again, I want to thank uh, Winter Knight 87 for this, for, for making this team. I want to thank all of the, the thousands of people who stopped by uh, to go and check this team out on, on Twitch, um, twitch.tv slash Pokesports or TikTok at TikTok uh, at, at Pokesports. I was going to say TikTok.com slash at Pokesports. I think that that link actually works, but it is at Pokesports on, on TikTok. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate the people coming by for that. Uh, and folks, I want to thank you for watching because this wouldn't all be possible without without you folks, viewers like you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, that's all. Anyway, I'll see you next time. I've been Mike. I put two Pokemon on the field. Bye bye.